Hey guys, welcome back. I am going to go over a couple things with you today. I know there's some questions that need to be answered and some things I want to talk about. I do have my notebook. I wrote a couple things down. So I'll be like looking at my notes, but if you don't know me, I am Laura Beth Love. I am a designer and an author and I make jewelry. It's what I'm kind of known for, Broken China Jewelry. I'm the owner of the business Dish Functional Designs where I make jewelry out of antique broken china. My first book is called Boho Chic Jewelry, 25 Timeless Designs Using Soldering, Beading, Wire Wrapping, and More. And this is upcycled jewelry. So I'm using mementos, family things, upcycled things to make jewelry. The main thing I have to talk about is your the burning question, where is soldered alchemy? Okay, um, where is soldered alchemy? This beautiful book, I published, uh, pretty soon after I published Boho Chic Jewelry, I published Soldered Alchemy. Soldered Alchemy is out of print right now. And I am kind of in the works with my publisher about finding out what I can do about that. I am probably gonna get my rights back for that so I can either publish it with another publisher or self-publish, which is what I might do. So yeah, it is kind of a, how do I say? It's a process that has to be gone through of contracts and, you know, files and fonts and all kinds of things. So it's going to take me a little while, but I promise you, you are going to be able to get Solder Alchemy again. And I am unsure whether it will just be an ebook format. I know people like to have the solid book in their hands. They don't you know, some people like to, you know, read from the pages of a book. The ebook is the next best thing. If I can offer that to you, I will. So yeah, this book has been in great demand. It's gotten very, very popular. And uh, don't buy $500 versions online. I mean, please don't do that. You're getting ripped off. I've seen copies go for over a thousand dollars. I don't think they've sold at that price, but if you do a Google search, you'll come across them every once in a while. Uh, right now, I think there's two available, one for about 75, maybe one for 65. Now, you know, when my books first came out, uh, I did buy a few cases and I offered them for sale in my Etsy shop for about $50 each. And that was a signed copy. So I would, you know, write that out to you or for whoever you wanted it written out to. And I usually include like one or two little goodies in there with that, maybe some beads or something to get you inspired and excited to create. But yeah, don't buy this for like hundreds of dollars. Like, please don't, <laughs> you know, it, they're, it's highway robbery. I don't want you being taken advantage of. I will publish more copies of this. Like I said, I'm not sure whether it's going to be just um, an ebook or paper or both. I'd like to do both. Uh, the list book price on this in the United States is $24.99, $25. So depending on what it's going to cost me to get the font licenses, the price might go up a little bit and that's just so I can cover because when you publish a book, you need to actually purchase the fonts. Like, and I'm not talking about just the cover, this beautiful, awesome cover font, but like all the fonts that are like inside, like the text inside the book, all the text inside like that, you have to buy those licenses to use those fonts from font foundries. And so, yeah, it's a complicated thing. I'm working on it and see, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm writing a third book right now. So I'm in the middle of this really, really, really awesome jewelry book that I'm so excited about. And then, you know, I find out this is out of print. So it's kind of taking me a while because I'm doing these other things and I'm trying to do videos and, and you know, I'm a single mom with two kids. So I do it all myself and, um, you know, uh, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on with Soldered Alchemy. And I hope that I can get you a copy soon. I hope that, you know, I'll have it available for you. I am trying my hardest. I do have DVDs. Uh, I have two DVDs. I have the Dysfunctional Plate Necklace and I have the um, Soldered Alchemy Open Heart Pendant. And this is actually one of the projects from the book, Soldered Alchemy. And um, I don't think there are any more like hard copy covers, like, you know, the actual DVDs available, but I am going to see if I have some that I can dig up and I may offer those on my website at laurabethlove.com. 
So, okay, so we talked about Soldered Alchemy and we talked about the DVDs and yeah, I published these um, with FW Media a while back, like bead and wire jewelry, and I went to uh, Colorado to do that, and it was a lot of fun. So continuing on from there, oh, other workshops. Somebody asked me, will you please do Broken China jewelry videos? That is an entire workshop, and I'm gonna offer that eventually. I'm gonna offer that separately, probably through laurabethlove.com, and I will definitely talk about it in videos once that, you know, is transpires a little bit more. Other workshop, Pasanki. If you don't know what that is, those are Ukrainian Easter eggs and here are some of mine. I think there's a couple in there that my daughters did as well. So yeah, I had a really, I have, I should say, I have a really, really good workshop. It's wonderfully done. I really took my time and was meticulous and I made sure I got, you know, as much detail as I could. Um, into this workshop and I had it on Skillshare and I thought, you know, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna offer that myself directly to you. So um, in that workshop, we create this egg, which is a really pretty deer and uh, tree motif. You can do it in any color that you like. So that is another thing that I have coming up. What it will probably be is I'll probably have it as, you know, it's a workshop, it's a long, like a video step-by-step -step, and what I may do is I'll sell that on my website and it'll be like hosted by YouTube. So you'll get like a private link to this private video. And then with that, you can be part of the community. So what I mean is you can, all the people who subscribe and take the workshop will be able to like ask questions below the video, just like you do on YouTube, where you can ask a question, leave a comment, and you can, you know, talk to me or each other. And you know, that's a lot of fun. So I'm planning on doing that with Patsanki. All right, let's see what's next on my list. A couple people have asked me, either they've messaged me through my Etsy shop or they've contacted me through a, a YouTube video comment and they've asked if they can purchase the projects that I am creating in the YouTube videos and the answer is yes, most of them. One or two, you know, somebody grabs <laughs> that, uh, like either I want it or my daughter wants it or my daughter did my photography for the one video. But um, a while back I did a stamp solder with resin and paper and antique vintage tins. And so I have this pendant from that that is now at larabethlove.com. And the other two that I recently just put on my website, because like I say, I took all myself and you know what? It's time consuming. It takes me a while to get it done, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> this is the other one. This is that big, easy heart pendant video, big open heart pendant. And I just listed this, it's really pretty. So this is now on my website for sale. And then the last one that I put up today was, um, this was also with the stamped solder, and this is an antique book page. And so I did the stamped solder frame in a video. And there is actually, if you go to my website, laurabethlove.com on the front page, I have photos of all these items. And if you click the photo, it will take you to one page which, with big pictures of the item where you can purchase if you like or, or learn more about it. And there's a link and it'll say, this is the project from the video such and such. And you can click that and it'll take you to the video. So if you wanna see how I made it, you can do that. So yeah, putting those links in and writing all that, it's definitely time consuming and uh, you know, be patient and I will get the projects listed on there for sale. So this is that necklace. I think it is just adorable. It is cherubs from an antique book page and I coated it and I did the, you know, the soldered frame and I did resin on the front and on the back and it's just a really cool project. That is now available on my website and it's one of a kind. So I made this and you can own it if you like. So, all right, let's go on to the next thing. Let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Pasanki Workshop, Broken China Jewelry, Where's Soldered Alchemy, all projects on website. Okay, there's a question from Luann Nicholson on YouTube and she says or asks, how to clean the soldering iron during use? Okay, there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can buy something called a tip tinner. Uh, that is a, you know, it's maybe a few dollars. I can find one or two and put links below and, uh, you know, to get you started on, you know, what you're looking for. I actually do not use that. I use a damp sponge, that's all I do. And 
One way that you don't have to clean your soldering iron tip so much is to make sure that your metal is really clean before you solder and to make sure you're using a quality solder and quality flux. And while you're soldering, you will sometimes see like black debris, you know, come like kind of accumulate around where you're soldering. You'll have to clean that off. That gets on the tip of your soldering iron. And a lot of that is just dirt that, you know, is um, kind of like bubbling up from, you know, the process. And you're gonna need to clean your tip no matter what kind of soldering you're doing. And you know, I use a damp sponge and I just very lightly, and I don't like wipe the tip hard on the sponge. I just like, and I will do this eventually for you in a video. <laughs> so I just take my soldering iron tip and I just will really, and I'll just kind of like, like where the dirt is on the soldering iron tip, I'll just like wipe the dirt on the sponge. I'm not like wiping down the tip of the sponge. You don't wanna wear off that nice coating. When you first buy a soldering iron, the tip is tinned, which means it's coated with, um, you know, like a coating of whatever it is that they coat it on. Like it's almost like a coating of solder on the end, right? And that'll wear down after a while. Now, you know, my soldering iron, like how many do I have? I don't know, maybe four or five of them. And like, I make them last a long time. Like I take good care of my tools. I don't like drag them around. The only time I ever took my tools anywhere was like when I did photo shoots for my books. I went to like Cincinnati and I went to Colorado and you know, then my tools were traveling. But other than that, they stay in my workshop. I take good care of them. Make sure you always turn off and unplug your soldering iron when you're finished with it, by the way you need to wear safety glasses and wear a respirator mask. There are so many different topics I could get into about this. And I have seen videos where people have said, uh, you do not need to wear a mask when you're soldering. And they were talking about, I think they were talking about making stained glass. And they said that you only need a mask like before, I think it was for like the chemicals and not for the actual solder itself. And that's untrue. You definitely want to wear a mask. So not only are there fumes from like the flux, but there's also fumes from the melted metal. And not just fumes, but there's something called particulate matter. And I am going to do a video. I started writing out a script for it already. And I'm gonna go over like MSDS sheets, material safety data sheets that come with like chemicals and like metals that you buy. And like, if you're gonna like do an art or a craft that has to do with like chemicals or metals or anything that has like a possibility of maybe being dangerous like you really want to know what you're touching and breathing in and working with and i mean i've got asthma myself like i'm very careful but even if you don't you don't want to you know you want to stay safe so i i have that uh it's on my list of things to do is i will be going over soldering supplies, material safety data sheets. So I will definitely have that up as a YouTube video. So be on the lookout for that. I'm sorry, Luann, I was talking about cleaning the soldering iron tip. Now you can use a tip tinner. I'm not really super familiar with those because like I said, I don't use them for like the past, I don't know, 25 years I've been making like my broken china jewelry and my jewelry and that I've been soft soldering, low temp soldering, which is soldering with a low temperature solder and soldering iron. Um, I've just been using a damp sponge. Now, I do have a Salomoniac block. And that is another thing that I'm definitely gonna talk about when I do the MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheets video. It can be very, very, that's probably one of the most dangerous things that you can have in your workshop, fumes wise, like breathing it. Now, you wanna work, I always say, in a well-ventilated area, you need to have some type of mask. You need to have, if you have like um, uh, like a little vacuum, I can't, like the name of it like escapes me right now. Yeah, I have it on my workbench and it sucks the fumes. Or like, you know, if you work in like a basement or a garage, you can open up your garage door, put a fan on that, you'll be all right, but you still need to wear a mask. Um, so yeah, so that you can take the tip of your hot iron and touch it against that salamoniac and it'll make like a fume. You do not want to breathe that in, but that once you, you get it on there, you're gonna put a little bit of, I like to take a drop of flux and put it like on the sal and then like, you know, heat it on there and then you touch your solder and it's gonna coat your soldering iron tip with shiny silver solder. And then when you turn your soldering iron off, like 
you don't ever want to like solder and then like keep it dirty. You want to wipe it nice on a on a uh, you know damp sponge or however you clean your soldering iron tip. And then you want to, or what I do is I will clean it nicely on my you know sponge, and then I will touch the tip against my solder, and I will turn off my iron. And the iron is kind of cooling with solder coating the tip, and you should always do that. So that's a, a, I learned that back in my stained glass days. And whether you're using, you know, lead solder for stained glass or you're using lead free solder like we do for all of our cool solder jewelry videos, um, yeah, you definitely want to take care of your tools. There are probably 50 videos I could do just on like different tools and I'll try to like, I'm trying not to have it like too scattered when I make these little vlog videos that I, you know, I'm covering this and this and this, but like, it's hard to like put everything together and sit and say, well, I'm gonna do this one giant video series on like just soldering or just soldering irons. And so, you know, just watch these and you'll get these little hints here and there. Like when I think of them, it's like, oh wait, I should tell you this like while I'm at it, right? So let's see what else. All right, so we talked about the soldering iron tips and how to keep them clean. And if you have any tips about that yourself, things that you do, leave us a comment below. And by the way, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And so I know whether to make more of these videos or not. All right, so let's see, what else? Oh, okay, coming up next. Let's see, I am going to do a project next. This is gonna be my next YouTube video project is using vintage tin. So if you are a tinner, a tin person who likes to make tin jewelry or you want to maybe, you know, learn how it's done, you just think it's cool, I'm going to do an easy project. So um, I am not a super duper, you know, regular tin smith. I'm not a, a tin jewelry maker, but I do use it once in a while in my jewelry. And I know it's really popular and you know, some once in a while I get questions about soldering and tin. So we're gonna do a soldering and tin video and that will be hopefully next week. And like with the holiday, it's been kind of crazy, <laughs> you know, and like when you're a mom and you have all this stuff to do, my older daughter's in college and she's coming home next week. And so yeah, there's a lot going on in my house. So I am keeping it organized. I'm writing a book. I'm figuring about, about getting soldered alchemy back out there for you. And uh, all the while still, you know, making some jewelry and thinking about what I can teach you next. So if there's anything you would like to learn, or you know, you think that I might know about, or that, you know, you want to see a video made about, just leave me a comment below or on any of my videos. And I always read the comments. I try to get to as many of them as I can. And if I miss answering one, usually it's because someone else answered it already in one of the comments or it's in the description. Sometimes people don't realize that below the video, there's like a little thing you can click on to read a full description. And I put links in there and those kinds of things where you wanna check out like, my Pinterest or my Etsy shop or where to get like materials and tools and stuff that I show in the videos, it's all in that description. And if I miss something, just leave me a note and I'll see if I can do that for you. So yeah, my Pasanki course, I'm just excited about it. I've had one or two people tag me on Instagram and say, look at the egg I made from, you know, your Pasanki shop. And I was like, wow, I'm like, that's so cool. So if you make one of my projects, like put it on Instagram and tag me and say, check this out, Laura Beth Love. I made something from your video and I would just love to see that. And if you want me to share it on my Facebook page, which is Dish Functional Designs, you know, you can tag me, like I said, on Instagram. Usually the best way is leaving a comment or um, sometimes through my Etsy shop. I sometimes get busy and put that on vacation, but um, yeah. So let's see, what else? Um, did I cover it all? Yeah, it's been like crazy spring. It was like snow flurrying this morning. It's like April, what, 19th, 18th? It like was snowing, it's freezing, and then it's like, you know, it's, I just wish it would even out, you know, nice and even. I always have good intentions. <laughs> and the eggs take a while to make. So it's not just an Easter thing. It is a, I used to start in January. Remember when my 
girls were little and it was like, you know, right after Christmas and things are, it's January and it's like, it's starting to snow and it's cold out and things are like chill and what am I gonna do? And then I would pick up my Pasanki supplies and I would start drawing my eggs because I, I pencil them on before I start um, any of the hot wax process because if you don't know how they're made, they're made in a process which is similar to Batik, which is a wax resist process. So I would draw my eggs and I would start to uh, think of like what designs, they're all like um, traditional designs and these are actual chicken eggs and they're hollow. I blow the egg out in the end when I'm done with it. So yeah, here's the one I do in the workshop. And then here's another one I did at the same egg in purple so you could just see like how it looks in different colors. But yeah, so you definitely want to learn how to make pasanki. You know, if you like doing really relaxing, meditative crafts and art, uh, this is perfect. It, the smell of the beeswax alone is just so wonderful. You know, you have something so beautiful and so meaningful when you're done. So yeah, I'm working on getting that up. Hopefully this week I'll have, I, the videos are all, you know, the, the workshop is finished. I just need to take it from one place and upload files to another place. And it's, like I said, it just takes me a little bit of time. So I'm working on that for you. And oh, I have another really cool project coming up. Oh, okay. So first we're gonna do that tin one and then I have something really cool. So if you have a set of these, mine are like really, they're not shiny anymore. <laughs> they're really nasty. But if you've got a set of these, get them ready. Cause I'm gonna show you something really cool. We're gonna do something fun with soldering. And yeah, mine were in my basement and they were like way in the back of a shelf. Cause I don't use them very often. And they got rusted because it was damp down there. And so, you know, to remove rust from a tool, you soak the tool in vinegar. And, you know, that took all like the shiny chrome off my tools too, but it took all the rust off, which is what, you know, I wanted to do. I guess that's about all I have to say. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you and I support you in your jewelry making and soldering journey. I always say you can do it. Keep practicing, keep trying. You will be successful. You have to keep at it. So I will see you next time and I hope you have a great week and a great weekend. And um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.